าซึ่งนะคะแต่ว่างานวิจัยของท่านก็ได้สร้างความน่าสนใจทีเดียวนะคะเพราะว่าท่านได้พูดถึงเรื่องของการสำรวจความรู้แล้วก็อัตลักษณ์ของสมาคมอาเซียนไม่ว่ามีอะไรบ้างที่เหมือนกันนะคะโดยการสำรวจประ,ประเทศสมาชิกของสมาคม15ประเทศนะรวมไปถึงประเทศไทยด้วยนะคะแล้วก็มีก็มีลักษณะร่วมอะไรบางอย่างที่ชัดเจนบ้างนะคะแล้วก็กลุ่มประเทศไทยแล้วก็บอกว่ามีประเทศไทยมีชุมชนใหญ่น้อยในเขตเทศบาลมีในเขตมือใหญ่นะคะแล้วก็ท่านใช้คําว่า civil society ซึ่งอาจจะแปลได้ว่าเป็นสังคมพลเมืองหรือเปล่านะคะไม่แน่ใจเหมือนกันนะคะคุณอาจารย์เชียร์นะคะแล้วก็มีอาจารย์ดรชสุจินกะบอกว่าจะต้องมีลักษณะของการร่วมมือกันนะคะร่วมแรงร่วมใจกันแล้วก็อย่างเช่นอาจารย์ยกตัวอย่างว่าอาจารย์เองก็ลุกขึ้นมาเก็บขยะตอนเช้าอะไรอย่างเงี้ยนะคะคือก็มองว่ามันเป็นลักษณะในประเทศญี่ปุ่นเนี่ยเป็นการจัดตั้งองค์กรขึ้นมาโดยมีการมีอาสาสมัครคือต้องเป็นคนในท้องถิ่นที่มีความอยากที่จะมีส่วนร่วมในชุมชนของตัวเองนะคะแล้วก็ท่านก็บอกว่าความรู้และอัตลักษณ์ขององค์กรอาเซียนจะเกิดขึ้นได้อย่างเป็นรูปธรรมได้ถ้ามีการที่ประชาชนมีส่วนร่วมและมีความตั้งใจจริงที่อยากจะเกิดให้เกิดขึ้นนะคะ um, I'm not sure if we have time. Do we have time for question and answer session? I will have to consult just as you say. We have time. At least for five minutes. So I think I will give the floor to the audience. So if you have any questions, tell me. Can you come to me? 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 Uh, it's not really a question, it's a comment, and it's mostly for Ajahn Chayan, but uh, it concerns the uh, economic, ASEAN economic community generally. Uh, Ajahn Chayan is a, uh, comments are a mixture of pessimism and optimism. Uh, I think Ajahn is a very good positive person, so most of it is, there's a, there's a, there's a move to be as optimistic as possible, but the the facts are pretty pessimistic. And my own feeling is that ASEAN is not likely to solve some of these problems very easily. And the reason is, I have several reasons for this. One is, is that the general policy on relations with other countries is non-interference. So if there's a coup or if there's a bad leader or if something terrible happens that concerns the domestic situation, we won't interfere. So to get the community to agree to some regulatory measures to solve some of these problems, I think is unlikely. The second reason I think that inhibits cooperation is that business always moves more quickly than government. Business moves, it races forward. So every time I come to Chiang Mai, I hear another story about CP. And CP is like a monster. I mean, the CP can move in and, and buy land and create their vertical integrations and move into new areas. Industrial agriculture is what they do, basically. And it's unlikely that ASEAN community is going to be able to, to, to curtail or to regulate this kind of, this kind of thing. And it's, it's, it's industrial agriculture, as you point out, creates displaced people, throws people off the land. The third thing that's a problem is that, is that these countries like, like Thailand want and need cheap labor. So some of these people get tossed off the land, some of them end up in those towns, displaced people with no jobs, but many people that are displaced come to the cities, find work, they're illegal, they have illegal, illegal residents, they don't have papers, they don't have documentation. But one thing that ASEAN could agree on, I read recently, I couldn't believe this, but I think it's true, they agreed on a rubber price. Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia are big rubber producers in, 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 in Southeast Asia. And they agreed on the rubber price. So when it comes to making a cartel to control the price of rubber, yes, they can agree. But to control some of these, to regulate some of these terrible consequences of industrial agriculture and, 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 uh, and, and other pressures that create migrant flows, 
I think is uh, unlikely. So I'm even more pessimistic than you are. I cannot agree with you more. Uh, I just want to add a few information. It's CP does not buy land in Chiang Mai, but Thai beef. So the whole night bazaar and Sri Wong Hotel, etc., including the Sancto One, old Sancto One movie theaters that belong to Pun Chiren Sri Watana, so the biggest land owner in Thailand, probably. Uh, I think uh, uh, what I just want to say here in support of your view is that we are very much uh, see, behind the ASEAN is the neoliberal capitalism. So we, when when uh, you talk about this cartel of rubber plantation, right, this is a time when they want to group together to compete to, to be able to sell the rubber to China in a better price. But other than that, I'm not sure whether Vietnam, Thailand, or Myanmar will agree upon rice cartel. They are, they, they, if you see what, what I want to tell John Craig is that my colleague from Malaysia said that uh, no, no, no other countries has been active about uh, ASEAN community, as in Thailand. That is number one. Which, organized conference on ASEAN almost every week from kindergarten school in the border they talk about ASEAN but the knowledge that they talk about is so <coughs> superficial do not talk about what you just mentioned or what you summarized what I have said beautifully they are not talking about this uh, what is behind ASEAN in fact uh, our colleague up here was correct in saying that in the beginning ASEAN was concerned about the expansion of communism. But in the last 10, maybe 10 years, ASEAN is not the organization with our concern with uh, sec national, regional security, but concern about economic prosperity. And of course, it's very very uh, closely tied up with Japanese economy. So if Japanese economy is, is uh, in trouble, it means ASEAN economy will be in trouble too. No one will buy. Um, so if, if Japanese people are now, they are buying chicken teriyaki from Thailand. But if they have less money to, to buy, then the chicken in Thailand cannot be sold to. China, uh, to, to, to Japan. So behind this is economic profit. That's why no one cares to talk about human rights. Or when there's a coup in Thailand, no one would like, they don't, they don't want to say anything. The first two, two or three weeks after the coup d'etat happened in Thailand, as a general know, that we have our, our top brass military visited Myanmar. And we invited the chief commander from Myanmar to visit our prime minister. And also the minister of defense from Cambodia also came to congratulate our, our leader. So this is, uh, uh, no, no one talk about uh, academic freedom, you know, but, but collaboration in certain ways to pave the way for CP to make an advance in northern China or Sometimes to get more land in Don Mien Chai. Or Turkey Dao Thai to develop the Dawai Mega Project in the southern part of Myanmar. That's what it is. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? very small observation um, to Professor Sujinaga. Um, your, your talk is very interesting and um, in, intrig uh, very intriguing. Um, my observation about civil society is that 
I agree with you that civil society in Japan is very strong in any, any city, both big and small. But in the developing countries, like countries in Asia and other, in other parts of the region, where um, one is economy is not very strong, so people tend to um, depend so much on individual. I mean, the civil society in, in, in developing country is not as strong as those in developed country. Please correct me if I'm wrong. In my observation, like in Thailand, especially in, in um, like tourist place, like in Chiang Mai, in the center part of Chiang Mai, there are many people, people who come from, I mean, all parts of Thailand, and um, they have no sense of community, one thing. So they just, they just do their business, sell things and buy, you know, sell things. So the, the sense of making community, not, I mean, in a, especially in a tourist place, like in Sukhumvit in Bangkok. So it's very hard to happen. Um, I wonder what you think about this. Thank you for the question. Uh, looking back, Japan, 1950s, 60s, no one uh, interested in neighborhood association. There, there are neighborhood associations in Japan uh, since the World War II and after World War II. And civil society in Japan is very strong, relatively strong, but uh, relatively small room for civil society. In the transition period, many people are their spirits are, in a sense, are caught by economic growth or secular desire, whatever. whatever. And however, still in Bangkok, in Myanmar, uh, Chiang Mai, uh, I think there are a lot of seeds, a lot of uh, important ground. Sometime later, it would be a flourish. It's still not so. For many people's eye, it looks not so important. But it is very important for your country's safety and future advocacy. Now, just doing uh, some uh, self-governing activity in local area, and it's very low-key. Many people are not uh, uh, evaluated very high. Just same as 1960s, 1950s, 60s Japan. But, uh, Please uh, try to keep this uh, important uh, tradition and uh, human network, social capital. Then, sometime later, it would be flourish as an important uh, actor for advocacy and so on. So on. on the other hand, in the big country, big city like Bangkok or probably uh, Chiang Mai as well, some NGO type, uh, Western type uh, association may be active, but. Uh, Present stage is a little bit uh, uh, separation of uh, so, so called Western type association and uh, community type association, community, community uh, in Thailand. But uh, I, I hope they will be realized that both of them are kind of very important two phase of civil society. So uh, please uh, pay attention to the, these uh, local level activity with uh, important uh, actors. Questions? So I would like to thank our distinguished speaker and also our honorable moderator for such an interesting session. Next, I would like to invite Assistant Professor Dr. Sumali Sawadirapong, the Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, to present a token of appreciation to our speakers and moderator as well. Please welcome. Next up, 
จะเอาเงินอื่นเราเป็นคนที่ดีที่สุดในโลกนี้ 